Would you like to animate a project with OpenTunes and are interested in the possible workflow? Well here's part 2 of my 4 part series and today we'll be looking at rough animation with extremes, keys, breakdowns, in-betweens and how to organise your timing. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to part 2 of my animation process series. In part 1 I covered the story from initial sketches to storyboarding to animatics. You can see this in the link in the card above and description below. Today I'll start the rough animation which includes describing extremes, keys, breakdowns, in-betweens and timing. As with all my videos there are time codes in the description below so you can jump directly to the relevant section. The terms extremes, keys, breakdowns and in-betweens are often defined in different ways by different people. And unless you work in a professional studio or with other people, your definition of them doesn't necessarily have to match with mine. But here's my interpretation of them. So first I'll lay down my extremes which define the extreme distance that the character has to move, either physically or emotionally. And then I'll break this down into keys which define key moments in the action and then I'll add breakdowns which just break down the action further so I can help time it out and finally we'll get to in-betweens that makes the action smoother. And when we finish the rough animation there can still be some more in-betweens to do later once the inking is complete. But we'll get to that next time. So let's take a look at the animatic before we go any further. So the flower sack starts on the floor, we zoom in close he looks up and then he takes a jump and lands at the top in a little puff of smoke. So for the sake of the rough animation I think I'll leave the background as it is for now, I may choose to add one in later. So we'll just lock the level off so we can't edit it later. And then we'll take the animatic sack out of the final output which is the first column here. So the first thing we'll do is to add a new raster level to draw the flower sack on. And we'll call this one rough sack because it's the rough animation for the flower sack. And as usual we'll change the column name. So we can track it easier. And then we'll change the colour of the flower sack from the animatic. Bring it down to a dark yellow again so we don't get it confused with the current level. So in the storyboard and the animatic we drew all of the frames in sequential order. Or straight ahead as it's called in animation. But for the rough animation we'll use the in-betweening method. So we'll draw one frame at the beginning of the action, one at the end, and then we'll start to draw in the middle. So firstly let's draw the extremes. So on frame one, we'll use the pencil tool and we'll draw the flower sack in its first position. So now we've got the first extreme frame, we'll turn off the animatic so we can't see the flower sack from the animatic. So before we go any further, it's worth mentioning that there's two ways to make drawings. One is to draw on the table while you're animating with the timeline or the X sheet, which I can't do at the minute on frame two, and I'll show you why in a second. And the other way is to go to the level strip, which shows a flat list of all of the drawings stacked top to bottom, and you can click on any previously created drawings and continue drawing on them away from the table, or select a new drawing window and start drawing on them in here. But because we're animating straight onto the timeline, it'd be useful just to draw straight into the table view. So to change this, you go to the File Preferences, go to the Drawing tab and take a look at Auto Creation. At the minute it's disabled, which means I can't draw on the table, only on the level view. So if you open up the drop down, there's two different options. One is Enabled, and by having that set, it means I can go to frame 2 with no drawing and just start to draw and it'll create a new drawing number 2. The same is true with the third option in the drop down. However, if I leave the gap and try drawing on frame 4, 5, 6 and beyond, it creates a brand new set of drawings. You can see it's starting from drawing number 1 and if you look at the level settings for it, you'll see it's a vector level, not a raster level. The default type of level could be set in your preferences, but you might not want to create different drawing sets here. So if you want to draw ahead of the current drawings, you go to your file preferences and change the option instead of enabled to use X sheet as an animation sheet. 
And then if I start drawing on cell 4, it'll extend the previous frame up to frame 4 and then create a new frame 4. And that is still the same raster level, so I can use the pencil if I wish. So I'll just erase that. And delete those. And save. So I'll draw the second extreme on frame 2. And if I use the onion skin, choose the pencil, and what I'll do is I'll trace over frame 1 so I can keep the size consistent before I go to the final frame. Now it's done, I press S to change the selection tool, draw a rectangle around it, and then move it to its final location. And again, I'm aiming for this final third section for it to land in. Okay, that's the two extremes done. Now I need to draw the keys. I need to show key movements between the two extremes. So the keys I'd like to show are the close-up of the flower sack when he looks up and down. Then when we come back to the wide view, I'd like to show as he squashes down, stretches up during the jump, reaches the peak of the jump, and then comes down to land. So I'll just add those now. So the way we do it is we go to the final frame, we press the insert key, or you can just click the bar at the top of the frame and move it left and right to leave a gap between the two. You can then start drawing on the frame. I'll just make a mark on the page to create the frame. Just show what happens when you create a frame between two others. So because the previous drawing was drawing number two on frame two, when you insert the space, the second drawing was still drawing number two even though it's moved to frame three. They don't automatically get renumbered. So the new frame is number 2A, which is fine. But if we insert again before 2A and start drawing, we get 2B, and this is where we start to get problems. At the minute, there's a small bug in open tunes where if you have more than one frame with a post-fixed letter like 2A, 2B, 2C, it'll only save one of them. So if you close down and restart open tunes, you'll lose some drawings. So what you need to do is to renumber the drawings as I showed you in part one of this series which involves just highlighting all the drawings and then just hit the auto renumber option. Okay, so let's remove those other frames. Fine, so now we're back to the two extremes of frame one and two. So let's insert the new frame and I'll start drawing the keys. Okay, so that's the first few keys drawn, but I want to make sure that the flower sack moves in a nice arc. So what I'm going to do is add a new level and draw an arc guide on it. So I'll add a new raster level, and I call this rough arc. Okay, and it's added the first frame of this new level on the same level as the flower sack. And I'm going to change that by clicking on the top bar of this frame and then moving it up. There we go. And sometimes when you move drawings and cells around, it does create extra blank columns. So just highlight it by clicking the header and pressing delete. Okay, so I'll rename the title. I'll move this one below the flower sack and I'll extend it for a few frames as we'll need it during the duration of the jump. So I'll just draw a rough line of where I think the flower sack should be jumping. And remember it's the centre of gravity that's the important part. So on frame 7 I've got the sack just leaving the ground, and then frame 8 is where it lands. So I'll just add the keys in between there. Okay, so that's the keys done, so if we run through the frames. So we start with the initial position, followed by a close-up of the flower sack. He looks up, he looks down, then we go back to the first position again, ready for a squash down, to a jump up, to moving through the air, and starting to curl up. It curls up at the top, it lands down with a squash, it comes back up with an extra stretch, and settles down to its standard position. So that's all of the key moments in the animation. Now I need to add the breakdowns. And these are yet more in-betweens to break down the action 
into more manageable chunks ready for in-betweening and set out the spacing. So for instance, from frame 7 to frame 8 there's quite a large gap. And you can see the flower sack is starting to curl up, ready to lift its feet up. So I need to add a few breakdowns in there to make the action slightly smoother, and then we'll time it out. So I'll add all of those now. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the movements I've got there. You'll notice I adjusted the spacing of some of the drawings to make sure the flower sack followed the arc with a centre of gravity. And while there's only a dozen or so drawings on the arc, it's easier to adjust them now than later when I've done all the in-betweens. So now I've finished all the breakdown drawings, I can work on the timing. So all I need to do is go to each frame, work out how long I need to stay on that frame and extend that frame along the timeline. In this case of just moving the frame along to where you think, watching the animation and then readjusting. Then keep watching and readjusting. And hopefully you've got enough breakdown drawings that you can work out the timing ready for the in-betweening. And this is where the animatic can come in handy because you've already worked out the rough timing once. So you could use that as a guide and then tighten it up later. Okay, so that timing looks about right. So now I just need to go through and have my in-between drawings to make the action smoother. All you need to do is to delete some of the in-betweens by highlighting them and pressing the delete key. And then start drawing on the first frame of the empty set. And you'll notice it creates a new drawing for you and extends it up to the previous frame. So that this way you keep the timing. So I'll just add all those in-betweens now. And I'll be back in a second. And here's the final animation. I think that looks pretty good. So today, I finished off the rough animation. I've gone through adding extremes, keyframes, breakdowns and in-betweens, with plenty of open tunes tips along the way. If you like this video, please like and share to help the channel. And comment below if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials. And remember to subscribe to be reminded of future tutorials, including next week's, when I'll be doing the final animation. That is clean up and ink and paint. And I'll see you with that next Friday. And that's a guarantee.